What up, Internet? It's your boy, Rhino Rider, back for another podcast, coming back strong with my friend and acquaintance, Guns. John Paul Green. How's it going? It's going fantastic. Um, <clears throat> go by John, right? Uh, John Paul. John Paul? Yeah. Or JP or... John, John is just my dad. JP? That's what I usually tell people. Okay, cool. So, um, interesting fact. Um, first of all, thank you very much for course. coming in on Glad a Sunday, be. doing this. Uh, um, I always like to start out with my origin story of how I got to meet uh, or to know these people. Uh, John's is a good one, just like uh, everybody else's. So uh, I went to a um, mixer yeah. event. Mixer. Yeah, Hollywood. It, if you live in LA, yeah. You go to mixers. You go to mixers, right. you go to events or whatever. Um, and they're usually awful. Uh, ninety-six percent. Ninety-six percent of the time. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> um, and uh, I was standing there and kind of watching whoever it was talk, and looked over and saw your face and said, "Holy fucking shit, that's Hank McCoy." Mm. Holy shit! Like I gotta, I like my, you know, Abby would crucify me if I didn't talk. Right. You know, at least like say hello For or whatever. Sure. Um, so I went up and, and introduced myself and, and you were very cordial and nice and, uh, uh I had to ex explain that I was not Beast from X-Men, <laughs> Hank McCoy, <laughs> but I was Chuck McCoy. Chuck McCoy, sorry, sorry, I apologize. But I do Chuck get McCoy, that a lot, yeah. the big blue guy from X-Men. I just knew the last, friend. you were, you were impressed that I knew the last name. You did know the last name, that's Same correct. last name as mine. Yes, so, that's right. Yeah. Um, anyway, for those of you who don't know... The last name's the important part. Ah, uh, oh, right. right, yeah. Chuck McCoy is a character from a uh, uh, Disney TV show, uh, Austin Alley. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, my child in March of 2014, and so about a year or so in, started watching, you know... Kids TV. Yeah, Kids TV, started watching Disney. And um, and both Abby and I became avid fans of the show. I appreciate that. Um, and then, obviously, uh, got to you know or saw you, and um, and so my mind was like kind of blown, like a little like boyish, starstruck. <laughs> Very <laughs> to, nice and generous to see of you. you. Yeah, you were. Um, uh, yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know, Austin and Allie, uh, TV show on Disney ran from like 2012 to 2016. I think the last episode was January 2016. Okay, yeah. The finale. Um, great show. Uh, I mean, I, it, it was, it is, it was a, a very well written show. And Disney does this a lot. We're, I, we're just going to start jumping into stuff. Uh, 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 Disney produces some really great like show like mm -hmm. that young teen like obviously like for children and, yeah. and not so much for adults or whatever but like they really got that market and that that, mm -hmm. that mid teen and um, like Girl Meets World I was right. a big fan of that yep. as well yep. um, but they're just they're really entertaining I think they're well written yeah. I think they're well cast I think they're well acted um, so before we jump into uh, that and talk about that show, which I definitely want to, um, uh, let's trace back. I know you're from Houston originally, so yeah. give me give me your origin story of, of uh, growing up, uh, we didn't, how you got to LA. I uh, yeah, grew up in Houston, uh, Texas. Um, Not. Not is there Houston. another Houston? Oh, I'm sure there is. There's a Los Angeles, Texas. Um, <laughs> there is, yeah. There, Texas has, there's a Paris, I know there's Texas. Paris, right? Yeah. They have uh, an infinite number of uh, towns that they just take names of famous yeah. people. Yeah. Um, like Las Vegas, New Mexico. Um, I didn't know there was that. Either. There is, yeah. Um, but anyways, I, I, so I grew up in Houston. Uh, I, I went to a performing arts high school. Um, I, I'm what does that mean, uh, performing arts 
High School. So it was a, uh, it's called the High School for the Performing Visual Arts. It's the longest bumper sticker, I think, in the history of mm -hmm. uh, bumper stickers. It literally is the whole bumper. Yeah. Um, it is a magnet high school where half the day, the, the morning, uh, well, your first two years in, I, I went there for theater. So the first two years in the morning, I took multiple theater classes. And then in the afternoon, I had academic classes, so English, you know, alternate math, days. Yeah. Um, and then when I turned a junior, it was just reversed. They did the academic stuff in the morning, um, art classes, theater classes in my uh, case, in the afternoon. So I went there, um, learned a ton. I mean, learned things that I, I just like, to this day, I'm baffled that I got such a great uh, theater and training out of that. If I remember correctly, like you're like classically trained. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that As was an actor. Yes. Yeah. That was sort of starting there. Then I uh, graduated. I had a couple of schools I wanted to go to. Um, my dad told me though, if I was going to go to a public out of state school, that he wasn't going to pay for it. Uh, my dad went to UT for a bit. So I, Oklahoma has a great theater program. That was off the books because out of state. Out of state, and he wasn't going to allow his kid to go oh, to OU. Oh, Yeah. Um, oh, uh, both my parents are UT. Yeah, so. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, crossing the Red River was not an option. Yeah. Um, Tough day yesterday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tough day for UT fans yesterday. My dad was going to try to go, and I was like, just watch it at home. It's a better view. I'm glad he didn't because he would have been dejected driving back from right. Dallas. Um, yeah, so I went to. Uh, so I, I, the other one I really wanted to go to was the University of Minnesota, hmm. which has the Guthrie Theater Program. Uh, I think one of the best theater training programs for young people out there. For, the, for classical theater. And I settled on SMU, which is in Dallas, um, home of the football pay-for-play scandal. Um, that was the real reason I wanted to go. It was because I thought there were going to be boosters buying the actors' Corvettes. Um, but there were no how many How many Corvettes did you they, almost get? I almost got, uh, I almost got to ride in a BMW one. Yeah. The school is, I, that school is so, um, the, 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 art, the arts program is sort of isolated, the Meadow School of the Arts. It, it's not like the rest of the university. I didn't really venture outside of the building unless I had a class in the rest of campus. The rest of campus is, it's so uh, white and rich and mm -hmm. awful. Uh, I, I made little to no friends outside of the arts program, which is this diverse group. Um, and, and like there were Lamborghinis and, and Maseratis. It's the the last time I looked a couple of months ago. It's the it's the eleventh, tenth or eleventh most expensive school in the country. Wow! But the Meadows program has a great endowment. I mean, the whole school does. But I, they I got. Do a, you know anybody that's come out of that school? Like uh, you know, uh, actors, film, you know. Yeah, that some of the uh, from SMU we've had um, more in the grad program, but for the undergrad we've had uh, Kathy Bates. Um, she was one of the earlier Meadow School uh, alumnus. Um, Lauren Graham, um, Dylan Baker, a lot of like really great classically trained like yeah. uh, character actor types. Uh, we don't have a lot of the Harrison Fords come out of there. But right. People that you know and, and you see and you're like, oh my god, like, yeah, that guy. Um, yeah, it, it was. Um, you know, Katie Featherston, she was in uh, the first, and I have multiple, Paranormal Activity movies. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, she was a year, she she would have been a, she was a senior there when I was a senior in high school, so I just missed getting to meet her. Interesting. Um, she had just graduated. Um, Jean, uh, I, I haven't followed, uh, I mean, I haven't seen her in a lot of things, but... She did those Paranormal Activity movies, made a, a decent dime on those. Yeah. Um, and then I think she works on, she's working on music, right? I think she's doing a music project. Okay. Um, yeah. I know she was in a show called The River on ABC a couple years ago. Oh, same Blumhouse. Yeah. yeah. Didn't go that far. Yeah. Um, a season or two. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, she's really into music now. Yeah. That's where she's putting a lot of her focus and time. Nice. Uh, she's very nice. Re really great. Um, and very generous to, um, she set up, uh, at the time, she set up a scholarship fund for uh, some of the acting uh, acting track kids at SMU. Um, I don't know how long it continued, but my wife, then girlfriend, uh, was a recipient of that, so it was great. Nice. Um, yeah, so I went to SMU, it was classical theater, um, you know, Shakespeare, Moliere, 
that stuff, not a lot of modern stuff. Learned a ton. A lot of the stuff that I learned in high school kind of got recovered, um, which is fine. It was just a good reiteration of it. But around my sophomore or junior year, I started going, yeah, I don't know if classical theater is the thing for me. Um, just felt like... I didn't really want to like spend you know a lot of time re like doing you know Macbeth. I love Macbeth, but I didn't want to like do it the rest of my life. I didn't want to do Christmas Carol every year. Right. <clears throat> um, so I started looking around, and there just happened to be a film class, first time offered, called uh, Acting for the Screen or, or Screen Acting or something mm -hmm. like that. So I took that. Um, obviously, not to toot my own horn, but a lot of the kids taking that class weren't actors. They were film sure. students who needed to take a class and right thought, yeah the easy a. right yeah so i was ahead of the, the curve a little bit in that but you know i really liked being in front of the camera i i liked the idea of giving you know six or seven takes and then just letting somebody else figure out like hey like which which one? You, yeah you you, you 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 pick i gave uh, how, you how yeah, good i look i gave <laughs> yeah. you six of them seven of them like i don't care i did yeah. my work goodbye um and so I was like, you know, I think LA maybe is is maybe the place for me, not New York, which is where everybody else was headed. Well, that's the that's the thing, right? right. It's one of the two, right? And to you youngsters out there, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, like technically, and and especially now with you know internet and and technology and stuff like that, like no, you don't have to like to make your first because my whole big thing is like. You want to make a movie, go out and make it. You want to sure. do a movie, go put it. Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? Write a movie, go make, write it. Absolutely. Um, you can do that from anywhere. Yes. You do not have to do it in, in one of those cities. But, mm -hmm. but, you still kind of at least got to go mm -hmm. to one of the two. Yep. Right? Right. Yeah. Uh, and, that's a, and that's a big thing I want to like, uh, like push you. Like I, I have, you know, yeah. same story, you know what I mean? Move to LA. Like, right podcast I did yesterday, like, yeah, from small town Arkansas to, to right. L.A., and right, it was right, like, right. oh, New York or L.A., right, what, right, right. you know, which one, stuff like that, but um, it's weird that that's a thing, but it's a thing. Right, it is. It is a thing. Um, a good example of that is we had some friends in L.A., uh, they decided that they were going to move to Atlanta, because that's oh, where all the sure, production hub was going, sure. right? So they, they moved to Atlanta. Everything that uh, he's auditioned for... Uh, has cast out of LA. Anything local, you know, under under five, they, they'll cast that in Atlanta. And he wanted to go yeah. there to build up his resume. Yeah. Anything under five, yeah, like waiter, you know, anything like that. They'll for sure you can get some credits there. But if you want a guest star role or something, or you know, a series regular, something like that, yeah. it's coming back here. Yeah. You can live there and and beef up that thing with some with some co-star stuff. But like, everything's going there. Can I tell you a really funny story? Mm -hmm. Um, that has to do with Atlanta, and I may have said this before, uh, but uh, so Sunday, I've gone to Sundance the last three years, mm -hmm. right? And I think it was this last year, and I never know like what party I'm at, you know, or who's hosting yeah, right. or whatever. Uh, just there to, to network, and uh, <laughs> I was at this party and, and uh, was talking to these two guys. One was like producer, one was you know actor. Um, they lived in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and they're like same thing. Like, you know, Atlanta's where you know all the Marvel movies exactly. are being right. shot. Blah, right. blah 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 blah. You know, and, that, and I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. But but who know, do you see in those Marvel movies? Right, exactly. And I and 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 and, and so I was, <laughs> I was, I was talking to them very passionately, like not trying to to dig them down, but right. I'm like. You guys gotta. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to move to LA. Right. Like Atlanta is dying. Right. Like ten years ago, yeah, it popped, sure. you know, but it's on the it's on the decline now. You're not gonna get in anything. And I'm sitting there like, and they were not having it, and they were not uh, very receptive to it. And then uh, my friend, who was there at the party. <laughs> kind of intervened and was like, oh, what's this guy saying? You know, all right, oh, I'll see you guys later. He pulled me aside and he goes, Ryan, you do realize whose party we're at right now? And I was like, no, I don't know. He's like, we're at the Georgia Film, film Office. Commission, yeah. film commission. Great, good. Party, and I am bashing, Atlanta, telling them, right. like, you have to move out of Atlanta because right. it's it's dying. Yeah. Um, that's my Atlanta story. But it's... it's you got to know your audience. 
Well, yeah, I'm mean, <laughs> some bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 you know. But it's true. It's like, it, it's like, it, uh, and and I mean, L.A. and New York will always be those staples. Mm -hmm. There, you know, it was New Orleans, right? It was yeah, same thing. Atlanta. It was, you know, Vancouver. Right. Uh, you know, Toronto's big right now. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, um, there are those those kind of short. Yeah. you know short-lived things that people are like oh they watch it for like three or four years and then they're like that's where I'm gonna go I don't have to go to LA or New York it's like yeah no you're wrong right. yeah when I was a junior or senior I got a commercial or a, a uh, well I, I did film a commercial but I got an agent in Dallas and she covered uh, Texas Louisiana and some New Mexico and yeah, there were a couple of times like I'd get in, I'd have to drive to Shreveport because Louisiana was where a lot, or Shreveport in particular was where a lot of those casting offices were for a time. And now I don't, I don't mean, I, I'm sure there is, there are things that film still in Louisiana, but you know, I, I don't see a whole lot of Shreveport being like the place that like you gotta go right. to Shreveport. Right. Um, but I, you know, I made that. I made it once that trip. You know, three and a half hours, and my agent was like, "Oh, you only have to make it once, and then you can do tape. You can just go on tape for everything else." And that's what I did. Um, but yeah, the Louisiana, same thing that they just. So then, so uh, you decided to move to LA. Yep. With your then girlfriend. With my then, then girlfriend and then agent who had an office out here. Okay. So I got out to LA, sort of already getting over that hurdle. Um, of having an, or trying to get an agent. Mm -hmm. um, we move out, we, our cars are packed as we're walking across the stage, ready to get out of Texas. Uh, we get here, we move here in 2012, um, and I, we just, I just sort of hit the ground running. Um, we lived in a studio for two years, I don't know how we did that uh, without murdering each other, but we did it, and within... Well, you could have murdered each other but gotten away with it we could yeah well it would have been unless tough to, this is all a big ruse yeah to like have i literally have lapd outside the door right now ready to come right right, right right if this is a sting <laughs> you guys got me <laughs> got you um it's all on tape <laughs> we moved out here in 2012 and yeah i think i i got the first you know i, I found a commercial agent really quickly because i have a i have a commercial look that's where mm -hmm. i make most of my money or it's where i was making my money I don't make any money anymore in commercials because they don't, they don't have commercials. I don't make money, period. Right. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got I, I auditioned for some things. I signed with uh, some managers at the time. One of them was an SMU alumni, not in entertainment. He went there for business, but I uh, talked to him and, and, and really had a strong connection with him. And so they just started sending me auditions, and, and I got the Austin and Alley audition was September of 2012. and. It was supposed to be for a one one off role, you know, one episode. I saw that it was a cowboy. I, I had a pair of Wranglers, of course, as I'm as is my part of my birthright. And um, I, I put on a, a frilly shirt and, and Wranglers and, and, and some boots and I went to the audition and I remember sitting in there and there was a kid in there. Uh, I he's somewhat famous now. I don't even know if he acts anymore, I won't say his name, but if you if I said his name people would do him and be like, Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. He was sitting there with another kid, and they were like openly, like I could hear them openly, like mocking me for wearing, you know, a cowboy outfit for a cowboy role. For the role, yeah. yeah. And they were, you know, like fourteen or fifteen at the time. And they were just, you know, kid actors that had grown up through the system, and they just thought that was the dumbest thing imaginable. And I sat there, and I was like, I said, I texted my girlfriend, now wife at the time. I was like, I'm gonna book this just because of these kids, and I can't wait to tell you about it after the audition. What these kids are doing. <laughs> and so I went in. They were really receptive. Um, the Kevin and Heath, the head writers, the creators of it, incredibly funny uh, guys. They started on all that, um, which was a, oh, know, a staple yeah. for me growing up whenever we could get cable, because we didn't have cable all the time. Nickelodeon, right? Yep, started on Nickelodeon. They're back at Nickelodeon now with a new show that I, I did an episode of their new show mm -hmm. like four months ago. It should be airing soon. It's called Cousins for Life. Um, that one I'm going to play a cowboy, so we'll see if I recur on that. Um, yeah, but I, I, you know, I filmed it, and it was supposed to be one thing, and and around that same time, uh, yeah, doors just started opening. And did they? Quick. Did they? Because you did more than one episode of Austin. For okay, first I'll interject my, my geek boy, Austin Alley, you know, fanboy 
think. I like the, Geek Boy better. Geek Boy as a better fanboy. Fan okay, I'm we should move. Geek Boy. We should move to adjourn and get that started. I adjourn fanboy. Yes. I now uh, Geek Boy will recite Geek Boy. Um, <clears throat> so as you now have a, a, a child, yep. you know, um, uh, just one like, that I know of. What? Well, yeah, at least one, right? And. Like, I don't know, Disney, you know, whatever, Nick, whatever it is, like, you just kind of put it, like, yep. I, at least for, for myself, mm -hmm. my, you know, a lot of other families restrict yeah, right, screen right, right. time, blah, 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 we're all in on it, I think it's the best thing ever, my kid knows how to operate an iPad better mm -hmm. than I do, um, and I think that's great, yeah. because, I, the, you know, when he's 25, um, that, I mean, like, that's what's going to be, you know, sure, it's going to be yeah, throwing yeah, yeah. up holograms yeah, on right, the right, 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 of course, like of course. Um, so we would always have, you know, Disney Channel on, and, and again, Girl Meets World, you know, there's cartoons, but then there are those, like, other ones, and, like, we became avid fans of those. I, they're just really well done. Yeah. They're well they written, they're well executed, mm -hmm. they're not throwaways, right. they're not just trying to fill in... A, and there a are some throwaways on the, on those channels. I mean, they don't make all, uh, perfect, great, funny, entertaining shows. They do make shows that literally look like they came out of a factory. Um, but I feel like Austin Alley, Girl Meets World was another one. Um, Jesse, to an extent. Jesse, I was going to say. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, they they, they they care about a lot so, of Yeah, them. yeah, whether it be the, the people that, uh, you know, created the shows or whatever it is. But, right. they, like, there was, there was some, like, heart and soul to it. Um, so, uh, fan of the show, and then... Um, and then your character comes on, and uh, I mean, famously, anybody if like just Google Austin and Ali, and what would, it, what would it be like like the the riffs between you and Caleb? Yeah, the are... um, the there is it. Someone put a, a couple of years ago. I saw someone put on YouTube a video and combined a bunch of them. <laughs> it's, uh, they're the best. The face off or something. I guess yeah. you would call it. Yeah, they're the best. And they're really well written and they're funny. So, this is an interesting part, because the last time we talked, I kind of talked about this, and you're, you're a comedic person, I find you very funny, I, I think you're well-witted, as I do Caleb as well. Yeah, great, um, he's very funny. And, and uh, as an outsider, as like a producer, you know, whatever, I'd be like, throw those two and let them riff, mm -hmm. and they'll come up with the stuff, but that's wasn't necessarily no, the case. Not the case at all. So this is interesting because again, providing value, whatever. So working for Disney, yep. the man, right? Right. The rat. Uh, yeah. I, it almost seems impossible that uh, there weren't some, there w wasn't riffing or whatever because your and Caleb's exchange was so natural mm -hmm. and so funny and so witty and. Uh, I, I mean, I guess that's just like really good writing, but like, like, talk to me about that. Part. Basically, for those of you that don't know, your character and Caleb's character. I was uh, kind of the Newman on Seinfeld. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, arch, you know, arch rivals. Right. Whatever. Um, <laughs> this is so fun. Uh, but you guys would always have little quips about and and. I guess how do you describe it? Like you always tried to one up each other, but yeah. it wasn't like a one up. It was, it was uh, like they were they were pun based a lot of times. They were just sort of like <laughs> so stupid. These insults but to each other. Yeah. It's sort of like your mama jokes to each right. other. But yeah, not, I yeah. mean, obviously not your mama jokes, but in that same vein. Yeah. Hey, um, red. And trying to talk, yeah. you know. Yeah. Putting the hands on the baseball bat, sort of. Right. Thing, right. Exactly. Up. So, and that seems. Uh, um, because I think Kane's a funny person as yeah, well. Yeah, he's great. He's um, very talented. Yeah. Uh, that would seem like right for you guys just like to go and, and out do each other, but that wasn't the case. So, no, they, so talk me through how that how that worked. I, I think that it, it, well, early on, you know, getting out here and that being one of the first, I did a, I did an episode of How I Met Your Mother one week, and then the next week I did the last time, uh, shout out from Austin Alley. So like it, I I got a lot of experience quick quickly, but still pretty nerve wracking to be on a set. A lot of people on there like sort of depending on you to deliver this thing that you brought in the room. Um, so like it, especially the first season that I was on, I was not gonna rock the boat or suggest anything. Mm -hmm. I I've seen people 
it, you know, it, 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 as the show went on and I would be brought back for an episode, there would be someone new and they would rock the boat and I would see, like, everyone's reaction to that being like, why would, like, why would they even bring that up? Yeah. Not in a rude way, but just like, they would be like, you know, they would, someone, this, someone would come in for a guest star or a co-star oral and they would just start saying like, well, what if the, the show should be, this is what the show should be, like, this is not right, this is what the show should be. And you're just sitting here like, and inadvertently like they're trashing the show and saying like my ideas or my writing is better than what you're and I just saw like I was like mm, that's not the way to do it yeah so first couple first season for sure didn't want to rock the boat didn't want to suggest anything otherwise second season once they got or the third I guess season three um, I started to feel more comfortable and I started I, I pitched an idea um, when we were in rehearsal boot shaking uh, a little um Who'd you pitch it to, like the creators? or? Oh, I pitched it to the director of the, whatever episode that was for the week, <coughs> and I said, what if I said this instead? Um, I said, you know, whatever the line was, I said, what if I say it, you know, in, instead of this, instead of that. And the director said, why don't you, yeah, do that during the run-through, and then if they like it, they'll keep oh, okay. it. So I was like, okay, so I did it in the run-through, and then I got a note saying, like, he, this, this is actually the line. Um, not from the creators, but from like a writer's assistant or something, or yeah. from the script coordinator, or, you know, whoever. And I was like, okay, well, just keep it. And I'll just stick to the script. Um, and then there were a few, you know, it was very much sort of a fluid situation. It wasn't a fluid situation. And then when we got to film that scene, you know, a, a lot of the times we would film those, and then Kevin and Heath would come over to the director or to us, and and say like, what if you say this instead of this and they would pitch the ideas and that's where it got to like I would say like what about this and they'd say yeah, they'd be like that's th oh that's good let us just adjust it slightly mm -hmm. so there was no like putting the cameras on and letting us go right it was everything had a process to like ideas suggestions usually it was through the acting coach or dialect coach whatever they would uh, whatever the, her title was um, and then that would get everything had to go through like um, a, a middleman or middle person. Now this is interesting. I'm going to interject, and I'm been on record several times, uh, you know, talking about you know, my whole thing is is uh, is okay. So the right there's it, it's there's it's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Right, the studio system. Yep. That's like the precipice. That's right. that's the goal for for everyone. I feel like the gap is narrowing, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And um, the interesting thing is that box office numbers have never been bigger. Right. 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 Setting records almost every month. Um, Disney, a big part of that, big player in that. Um, but. I look at I look at Disney produced films, uh, specifically like Marvel movies, whatever, and they're they're not um, they don't have any guts to them. They don't have any sure. You know, I mean, it's it's I can see it as clear as day. Of like, okay, well, you're going to use that color palette. We're going to cast right, right, this right. actor. We're going to have these. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very just like no one's going to die. Like you can you can plug in whoever you want into anything. It's like Absolutely. it's okay because Disney has a hold. So it's interesting to hear that that kind of transcends down even into their smaller yeah, TV sure. shows and, and stuff like that. Like they now they know what they're doing. Austin Now is a great show, oh, right? Well written, well you know, funny. Like I enjoyed it as a, as an adult, but um, but that is a. That is a that is a thing, mm -hmm. you know. In terms of like, that's got to be frustrating for the creatives or the people involved. Of like, right? You're so constricted. You're so yeah. You know, put into this cube. Right. Of like you're meant to fill. Yeah, absolutely. This space. So yeah. Go and fill it, or we'll get somebody else. Get somebody else. Right. And then that's sort of the thing with, um, you know, with, like on in a in a standard week of doing the show. You know, Monday would be the read through, get notes, maybe a little bit of rehearsal. Tuesday would be rehearsal all day. Then the directors would watch uh, and give notes at the end for the run through. Then on Wednesday was the producers run through, and that's where the network, or not the producers, the network run through. 
the network heads that were in charge of the Disney Channel programs would come down and sit and watch and then give their notes, and then ultimately their notes ruled over everything. Mm -hmm. Now they wouldn't go in and say they wouldn't they wouldn't nitpick in the creative process. They'd let everyone do their job creatively, but they would also I mean they they had to give input. They did give input, but there was no like it, it is a system. Yeah, it is. Um, what do you think yeah. about that? Yeah, I have my own opinions in terms of, you know, like, ultimately, like, I don't think, it, like, let, I think the creative should be, like I said, yesterday I did a show with a friend of mine who's director, and, mm -hmm. and, and we talked about, have you seen that De Palma um, documentary? I just Netflix? added it on my list on Canopy. So he had just watched it two days ago. I just finished watching it last night. Literally, three days ago I put it on my list. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I've been saying like that era of '70s to, to like mid '80s, where like it would, and and it will never go back to that. But no. like you had the creatives mm -hmm. running the show, oh, absolutely, and they were all working together. Mm -hmm. yeah, they were all sharing scripts, sharing ideas, right. sharing you know everything. It was an insanely collaborative process, and from that come some of the greatest. Pieces oh yeah, that, for sure that, that we've ever had. Right. So why does why don't studios follow that same model? I think that it 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 they want it's all about control. I think that the days of you know um, the, being over budget and three months late in Vietnam. Trying to get Marlon Brando to like remember like though that is so um, volatile and so there is no way to, to control that and that's scary because you it, it's scary because you could get you know Apocalypse Now and, and and that's oh my God you could get you know this incredible film but you could also get you know like Heaven's Gate you know it it's it, they they are all about the bottom line and the way that. The, the reason the Marvel movies keep getting... I mean, I remember five or ten years ago, people are saying, yeah, these superhero movies, it's a bubble. It's going to pop soon, and then we're, gonna, we're not going to have any superhero movies anymore. This is a fad. It's not a fad. Like, th this is what people turn to when they're I mean, feeling, they're at least slated till 2024. Yeah, not going away. You, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and so you got another six years of them, they, at least. You know, D Disney especially knows what sells. They know, they know what people... Uh, generally like to see and they know that like a reason a good example I think is when they took um, Edgar Wright off of the first Ant-Man movie because Edgar Wright was like I want to make this but I want to make an Edgar Wright Ant-Man movie and uh, you don't really rock the boat with their Marvel yeah. you know the, uh, yeah I, I that that story in particular I, I love the, the you know little Hollywood stories but uh yeah, that would have been a super interesting. I've been I great. haven't read the script, incredible. but yeah, that, it would have been a super interesting at least take. And and that's I, I mean that's even it. It's like, fuck, you got they they got rid of Chris and Lord, you know their yep. Lord brother, you know, and then threw on Ron Howard. Mm -hmm. And right. then by the way, credited it's a Ron like Ron Howard's the only credited director. But if you look at any other trailer or teaser for any Ron Howard film, mm -hmm. in the first 25 seconds, there pops up Ron Howard film. Right. None of the te teasers and trailers for Solo mentioned it was nope. a Ron Howard film. Nope. Nobody said it. It was just kind of like was thrown in there. Right. There's so many. Hey, have you seen Solo? I haven't seen it, uh, partially because it's, it it's really good. It didn't look appealing to me. It, 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 I, I, I enjoyed it. And here's the other thing with all those. That, like, yeah, they're... They're popcorn, you know. They're right, entertainment. Sure. They're not cinema, but like Solo is more on the side of, of cinema. But <laughs> there's there's like there's like this thing that like halfway through the movie, I'm gonna go on record too. By the way, anybody else that that has picked this up, let me know. So obviously, like it, it had to have been script rewrites and stuff like uh, yeah. that to the story. Uh, picture the first half of the film. The Millennium Falcon. So Millennium Falcon has like two mm -hmm. points. It does at the beginning of the film. No, no. But I mean, the traditional Millennium Falcon has like two, right? It's the like, uh, the thing that sticks out. Yeah, like the front of the ship. Are there two of them? Like, there's two. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like 
where the little where the where the cockpit is. Like here's the cockpit over there. Yeah. And then it's like. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I see what you're saying now. Yes. So. Yeah. For the first half of the movie, mm-hmm. this is like an origin story. It's connected. There's just one. There are, there aren't two. It's like that. Okay. Like it looks like a penis. A wiener. Yeah. Drawing I've just made. And then it crashes, and then and then from that like an hour after, and and then for the rest of the film without any explanation whatsoever, it, looks it goes back to the two, mm-hmm. like to traditional. And I'm like, okay, so the original script had a whole yep. thing yep, yep. of of like it got crashed, they had to fix yeah, it, blah blah blah, right. blah blah blah. Here's the you right. know Millennium Falcon, your 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 grown uh, gr- yeah yeah exactly. Um, but they 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 provide these they put these these fantastic directors fantastic talent mm-hmm. stuff like that into these roles and, and give them these movies James Gunn right uh, you know uh, yeah they, it's like they they pick even if Edgar Wright was able to do Ant Man I guarantee it would fucking look just like Ant Man sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? For sure. Like they just, they, it, it just, it, it's, it's constricted. I really, I really, it really bothers me. <laughs> really. Yeah, and, and and Disney is a big. Um, I mean, they're the biggest. Yeah, they're the. That, I mean, you know, it, it's it, look at any huge mega company, Apple, um, Disney, whatever. They 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 just want that. You know, they got to have that control. They they, they buy up. Lucas films, they buy up, you know, like they will probably one day. I mean, they bought up 20th Century, like you know, and people were already yeah. like, "Oh, we're gonna have X Men and movies together," and it's like that's, yeah, you put the geek boy stuff aside, like that is a bad thing. I was saying the exact same thing. I was like, "Do you understand that I grew up? You know, mm-hmm. we grew up. There were six studios. Yep. Spielberg created a seventh. Right, right, right. DreamWorks, right. like." Like the fact that you were able to create an actual studio, yeah. and for a hundred years there were only six, and you make that's in, incredible. When Disney bought 20th Century Fox, mm-hmm. I was like, "This is the the beginning of mm-hmm. the end." Absolutely, so they're just gonna buy up every single one Absolutely. because they're gonna do it bigger and better than all the other ones. Right. Uh, I, DreamWorks is the only one I don't think will sell out. I think Spielberg will probably you know, not. I mean, yeah. he doesn't do. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that. You know, it's like a it's a it's a snowball. I think it's just building up. It's just getting bigger and bigger. And then when they've bought up 20th Century Fox and probably you know whatever else, that, you know, I read a rumor that they had their eyes set on Sony. It's like when they have all that, then they'll put out what you, they'll put out what they're gonna put out, and you're gonna like it. Yeah. Because that's all there's gonna be. I mean, dude, Venom made eighty million dollars like opening weekend in October. Mm-hmm. Like, that's. And I've never seen. I haven't seen. The film. I didn't see it either. But it it's not going to be good. No. Black Panther made a billion dollars. Not a good movie. Mm. You know. Um, so that's very interesting. So uh, I will go on record and say I like Black Panther. I'm not like a Marvel. Uh, you know, I do like all anything. Any of the Captain America movies, like Winter Soldier, I think is probably one of the best, better movies. I mean, they're all, they're all like the same. They all are the same, and yeah. that, and that's a lot of people. I have friends that had the same argument: is that Iron Man it, three? Uh, I will, and, I and people remember. shit on it, but it, it was Shane, it was Black, Shane right? Black. Yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. and that at least had an uh, an interesting script or right. interesting concept or take yeah. on it. You know what I mean? And I think because of Shane Black is Shane Black, they kind of let him right. Gave him some some. Uh, I mean, they'll give activity. you know, yeah, like James Gunn. And I, I think they gave James Gunn a little bit of leeway in the first one because I don't think that they were. Yeah, you know, my friend just went to Disneyland and put a picture online, and I, I said to my wife, I said, did you know they got rid of the Tower of Terror? They they changed it. Oh, it's into Guardians, like Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy. Yeah. And she was like, oh yeah, you know, they had a big thing about it recently, and I was like, and then everybody's like, oh, we got to check out the Gardens of the and I'm like, you do realize it's the exact same. Yeah, it's ride. same thing. I would imagine. Yeah just rebranded but I was like you know I was thinking about it and I was like those Guardian movies like they're good I, I really and I laughed at the first one the first one yeah the first one's right. I, I didn't really care for the second one but like the first one was had a lot of great funny stuff in it yeah and James Gunn had his hand all over it you could tell and it was it was good and I was like those movies though are not the the, the movies that are I don't like they're not gonna have seven or eight more movies of Guardians of the Galaxy is that really the best use of branding? Like, you know, I'm sure there's contracts and all kinds of stuff involved, but it, 
it just seemed like they put a lot of stock into a movie that is a great character movie with a lot of humor, but, like, I don't see kids dressing up as, like, uh, Groot. Or, Groot in yeah. five or ten years. I mean, yeah. unless they keep making them. And I, and I just, like, I, I question, you know... Well, now it's off the third one, I'm like... He made you right bill, like billions of dollars. Yeah, they so they gave him they gave James Gunn that movie, but they you know and they let him do his James Gunn stuff. But like they also like you know there was a there was a leash like you know they yeah. wouldn't, yeah. um, I, you know and so the whole thing with the, going back to the whole the Disney stuff, it, it's just very much like, um, I mean I say this knowing that they gave me you know a bunch of work and I'm I'm grateful for it, but you know once I started coming around to the idea of like t you know, TV was invented for commercials, right? TV was invented to sell advertisement. The only reason we have TV shows that we know and love uh, is because of advertisement. Netflix uh, exists because we pay uh, we, we pay money, you know, every month for a membership, and advertisers expect us to go out and buy a Chevy truck uh, in, in, in exchange that they put commercials on in between our shows. Yeah. Uh, and kids' toys and is the same thing. Netflix, is, Netflix is an interesting model because they uh they're now produ they, they're now producing 100 million dollar budget movies for scorsese and, right. and fincher you yeah. know and stuff like that um and i recently read an article where they're like those are our one-offs those are like right. we right. know we we know that right. people like really good content so we're gonna bite the bullet on this hundred million dollars for a Scorsese film yeah. that comes out free, right? You, you know, free, theoretically, right, right, right. you're not paying to, for it to ticket. you, yeah. Right. But we hit on the hundred others mm -hmm. that are made for a million to five million mm -hmm. that you've never heard of, will never hear and, of, or whatever. Yeah. But are are good, you know. And and there in recent years, I've noticed this on Netflix. There is a ton of garbage, Netflix produced garbage on yeah. there, and it. And when it started, it was you know. When it wow, started, there every was, show yeah, was a hit. Yeah, yeah. And then You're now right. it was. It, there is stuff on there that is that is bad. Like, yeah. That they literally put their Netflix logo on. I mean, it had me worried for a little bit, but they put out new. I'd stuff say in the last like six months, I'm like, okay, they, they've sure. kind of leveled out a right. little bit more. But there's, I mean, there's, you know, that that's, you know, that that's there's some bad stuff on there, and and they know, but that's not for me. Yeah. You know, when they make something like, um, Debbie Ryan did a show on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of Jesse earlier. I, oh, I just listened to her podcast on, with Dex Shepard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Right. Debbie Ryan. Debbie Ryan. Um, but she had a Netflix show, and it, it was just pant. I mean, people, it was, I, I didn't watch, I, I read, you know, an AV Club write-up about it, and I, to be fair, I didn't give it a chance, but I read what happens in it and everything and, and it, it it just completely people were like this miss miss the boat they just did not you know get it but i'm sure they don't release the numbers but i'm sure it racked up views yeah and it wasn't made for me i just know? saw this thing this morning um like last year netflix garnered like i don't know 18 billion dollars or something like that you know where it's it's got to be billion not million right 18 billion and um AMC, uh, Cinemark, and the other theatrical, whatever, only garnered like 11.5 billion. And it's like, they don't even, like Netflix doesn't even release their movies nope. in theaters. I mean, they do it just to like, Get so, they can, right. so they can be qualified for, you know, awards or something like that, right. but like, that's not their MO. Um, so let's, let's transition into, uh, uh, I've been talking a lot about this lately, uh, future of filmmaking, and so like again, if if this right here were you know a sixteen year old kid in mm -hmm. Houston, yeah, who wanted to be a filmmaker or actor or whatever, and I'm trying to pound into their face, like forget everything that you know, like uh, you know uh, that's the reason I'm, I started doing podcast, you know, and, right. and, and stuff like that, like. Um, it's so, it's so, uh, like, the nostalgia of, of, you know, making a movie and, and, uh, and having it play in cinemas and winning Oscars, right. you know, yeah, and all yeah, this yeah, kind of, of stuff. Um, where is your head at in terms of, like, um, 
how are how are you? Where are you at in terms of like where things are going? Where your you know where your career where where you're looking to kind of strike or, or execute on and, and stuff like that? I um you know I. As a kid, you know, everybody dreams of winning that Academy Award, right? I mean, that's just mm -hmm. what everybody does. Yeah. They're in the business. Um, around, like, 10 or 11, I was like, you know what? I'd be fine just, like, being on TV. Like, I don't need... Like, I started, like, kind of, like, thinking real world. I was like, just give me, like, six seasons and a TV movie, mm -hmm. and then, like, I'll be fine. So when I got out here, um, I realized, like, I don't have the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the um, uh, Ryan Gosling look. Right, I, and and the, and I think the quicker that I realized that, <laughs> I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be insulting or whatever. But I was like, I immediately just thought, I was like, well, you got the Jonah Hill look, like he made it, right? Like. Jonah Hill, yeah. The thing with Jonah is like he, um, you know, he's had these like not ups and downs. He's had where he's lost a I lot of weight. I think he's and, navigated and something his else. career very well. Yeah, he's and now he's getting to do that. Like I didn't watch it, the the maniac. Min Maniac, is that what it's called? On, on Netflix with uh, Emma Stone? Oh, I watched the first episode. I'm not a TV guy. Right, I, but, but he's gotten but, yeah. to where he can say but that that's what I'm going to do. his new movie, uh, yeah. Yeah, the one he directed, yeah. yeah. Um, Looks fantastic. I think that it... So, that for me, I, I'm really in it to make money, right? I, I can say that I when I would do meet and greets for Disney and stuff, they would send me... Not Disney would send me, this company would send me. And it was like, it was soul-crushing. Because, you know, you'd be in, um, uh, I don't know, St. Louis or Milwaukee yeah. or whatever, and kids would say, like, you know, I, I want to do this. I, I want to I do it because I have a passion for acting. I have a passion for acting. If I didn't have a passion for acting, I, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I've done. And I still have a passion for acting. And I, you know, I would tell these kids, like, you know, the, the, the only thing I wish that I could have done differently was I wish I would have gone to a college or a university and gotten the training that I got in LA or New York. I wish that um, if you could pick up SMU and I could have all the same experiences and meet my wife and everything and put it in California and LA, I'd be set. Mm -hmm. I think when you, from that eight, because, and, and, and a lot of the people that I talk to and that, I, that, we, that we look up and I'm like, oh, whatever happened to this person, blah, blah, blah. They are either child actors or they got going at like, you know, 17, 18, or they, they had a family member move out to California for them sure. or with them. You yeah. know, and they have that Grew up in support. Orange County. Right. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's right up the road sort of thing. Right. Um, when you get out here at 22, it's not to say you can't do it because a lot of people do, but if you look at the people that are working consistently right now, they have been doing it for since they were, you know, a lot of them have been doing it since their kid or teenage years. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So, going forward, I think what, with all the Disney stuff, uh, the Disney Channel stuff, great experience, great opportunity. Got to meet a ton, like, lifelong, Caleb is a lifelong friend. He's so, he's, he's so funny, and he's blowing up right <laughs> I, now. I love, I haven't seen Body, but I... It was great. I, I saw yeah. it, uh, they had a screening of it. It's on YouTube Premium now. Um, I saw that. And Joseph Kahn, yeah. I remember Joseph Kahn, like, directing Linkin Park music videos yes, I did back a, on TRL. I did a commercial with him in 2014. He directed, it was like a music video yeah. commercial for Samsung. Yeah. Um, and, and he was talented then, and he's talented now. He, he's, yeah, it's a, it's a really great movie. Uh, it's very funny. Um, but yeah, you know, it, I, I met a lot of great people, and I had a great experience, and I learned, you know, like, going in, like, you know, you don't know what, like... Um, like a uh, these terms that you, you just no one like sits you down in training to be like um, you know uh, here this is what a wide is um, this is like a three shot this is, you know, no one ever like go, opens a glossary and goes through yeah. it with you you learn on the fly sort of yeah or you learn while making films and, and, and collaborating stuff like that and while on set if you ask well, what's a stinger like people would be like right. you're an idiot yeah, or, you know, we got to get an By Apple. By the way, a Stinger is an a extension cord. <laughs> oh, or we got to get, you know, uh, we got to get an Apple box, and it's like, they're going to go get a thing of apples. <laughs> right. like, it's like, no, it's just a wooden box right. that you can stand on. <laughs> it's something on. So, great experience. Loved working there. What it has done um, is pinned me in into kids' TV. Mm -hmm. That is the only opportunities that I have had since Still. the show ended. To this day. And commercials, which have dried up. So around the time, uh, the last thing I worked on besides the Nickelodeon show 
I just did one episode of that. Great experience, a lot of fun. Kids TV. Mm -hmm. um, I did a commercial that Peter Berg directed. It was for yeah, wow. Call of Duty. I huge. He was great. I was standing there in this Damn. down in um, we were, we filmed it at this like a refinery in Long Beach, and um, he came up to me. I had a role originally that I had booked, and then they on the on the day before they called me and said, "Hey, they're changing your role." I got there to find out it's because they put Danny McBride into that role and because they were getting, they were like trying to line up all these celebrities. Michael oh, is it like the and, Call yeah. of Duty? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So whatever. So I got to work. Don't, that's yeah. not the first time that's happened where a celebrity has bumped sure. me into another role. It's fine. But I was standing there, I had all this gear on and he came up to me and it was like, chewing his gum and he was like, hey, where are you from? And I said, Houston. He's like, oh, I got a pretty good football team, huh? I had, uh, that white guy, man, he can tackle. And I said, good state, good state, good state. All right, let's do this, you know. But, like, he took the time to, like, go up, and he, he didn't yeah. have to. Um, Buddy of mine actually had on the show um, is a, a stuntman, and uh, his work with uh, Peter Berg on a few of his films, and he said the same thing. He's like, not only in terms of the stunt world, like, he, like, like those are his guy, mm -hmm. like, those yeah, are his he people, but, yeah. but he, he's, he's very, very, like, receptive, right. respectful of... of sure. Yeah, he was great. Crew. Yeah, yeah. So I did that, uh, and then uh, like a month later, my kid was born. So that was like two years ago, and I started noticing, coincidentally, when my wife got pregnant, that a lot of I, like I was going I, at the height of everything. Um, I was auditioning like four times a week, and that's not an exaggeration. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And, where I would be at Sony, and then I would have to get up somewhere, you know, or, and I would or. I would have to wait around at Fox. I would go to a movie or something, or hang out at the Century City Mall, that that little shopping center, and then I would have to go down to Paramount or you know whatever. And that was it was it was exhausting. It was exhilarating. Um, you know, my wife would always remind me not to complain about it because there's a lot of people that don't get to do that. Right, hundred um, percent. But you know that it, it sort of I went through some management issues. Um, some agent, some weird stuff happened with managers and agents, and I put a lot of, uh, you know, I at this point I, I have no shame in saying it. Like I was like I coasted, you know. Yeah. I was like I'm on this Disney show. I'm I'm auditioning for like you know I auditioned for Foxcatcher. Like I was like things That's are true. I like I was like yeah like I I've got like this is this is the route I've got this, and so I didn't reach out to people. Like I didn't you know, I, I, when I first got here I was like yeah let's make a web series. And then, you know, when you're, then you start getting calls like, oh, hey, like, yeah, I really want to meet up. And you start like, or hey, can you call your manager for me and send him my stuff? And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, well, you're only calling me because, you know, whatever. And so I like, you kind of like, I mean, the only reason I'm, I asked you to be on the show is, is I want Austin uh, as a guest on the show. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. And you, I, I, I mean, just so we're very and honest. I do. I do. <laughs> but, you know, but at least we've had the time to meet before. You know, like where true, we, yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't like I have had people like call me that I I said like, oh hey, how's it going? When they, I was a senior and they were a junior or they were like a freshman in college, send me these long Facebook messages. It's like, so I backed away from it. I coasted. Um, I put my faith on a lot of like managers who were procure, procuring me work, who then stopped, um, like kind of left me in limbo. Um, had an age, I had a couple of agencies shut down that I was mm -hmm. with. So like I always felt like I was fighting against the current a little bit instead of just kind of like right and then I and then I would say well why am I fighting against it I'll just ride with it and it'll all work out and then of course it doesn't work out if you don't put any work into this business. True. So <clears throat> that's actually you know what that's a very good statement. Uh, I want to make a standpoint of that. Uh, you're very right and to outside perspective, mm -hmm. right? A kid in, in Iowa, um, you know their their perception of people in this industry and i don't think either one, i mean definitely not me i don't know how you feel about yourself but i'm like i'm nowhere near like making it sure or break it, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. i mean like Absolutely. not even close in terms of my like expectations of where i'd like to be um but the, it's just it's so confusing that's what I mean that's actually like the core of, of like why I've been doing all this stuff is like really want to like I want to Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. want to take that curtain right 
I want to tear it the fuck down. Right. And be like, it's just an old white dude right, right, right. with a lot of money right. and special effects yeah. behind the curtain. Right. It, it, it's it's not this. It's a, it's Mythical hard. It, it's 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 perseverance. It's where it, you know. So just like what you're saying, like you, you kind of coasted and then it kind of mm -hmm. slipped away a little. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Right. To 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 a degree. That's true. Like, yeah. you can get that show, you can get that movie, you can yeah. get that whatever, but, like, if you're not... I mean, Chris Hemsworth mm -hmm. works his fucking ass off mm -hmm. every fucking day. Right. You know, yeah, I got Thor and, and all, you know, oh, whatever else, you right. know, and stuff like that, but, like, if he just stopped and coasted, guess what? Two, They'd three years? somebody else that Yeah, awesome. yeah. We, yeah, we yeah. find somebody else with the first name and Chris. Thor. <laughs> yeah. You know, they would reboot it and they would move on. Yeah. Um... Yeah. But yeah, you know, so, uh, like I was saying, my wife got pregnant, and, and I noticed, I was like, wow, a lot of this stuff is changing in terms of what they're looking for. A lot of it went, uh, you know, in just a different direction that, that previously was working for me in, in the industry. And I got down about it, and I was like, well, like, you know, I, we were living in a place with, um, like, a low rent, so I wasn't, you know, our residual check was, like, taking care of our rent, mm -hmm. so I wasn't, I wasn't stressed about, like, oh my god, I gotta make next week's, I gotta make next month's rent, mm -hmm. so that allowed me to just kind of put my feet up a little bit, I wrote a little, but didn't ever do anything with it, and I got to the point when she got pregnant, like, you know, I, I don't see myself, like, I, you know, I don't see personally, I don't see myself, um, getting either out of the kids TV bubble and if I do it's got I gotta make some kind of I gotta make something that kind of like gets me to, you know like Ryan Gosling speaking of do getting out of the Mickey Mouse Club sort of thing and then getting into like what he does now which is like you know it's, it, it breaks that mold a little bit Timberlake's another one um, and so like that you know that was an option but I, I was like I gotta make money you know it, it, and for the first time in my life at least out in LA I wasn't able to say like oh yeah I, I can live and breathe as a professional actor like I you know I had never had another job it was just acting and that take that took care of it you know uh, since I moved out here and so like that was a that was a come to Jesus moment for me yeah. where I was like I, I don't have the I don't have the calmness to wait tables or anything like that but I was like I gotta do something you know and so I started teaching uh, which I thought oh, like, I was going to say selling drugs. Oh, that I mean, I did that for a bit, but it you know it just didn't pan out. I didn't. <laughs> it was a it was a corporate world. Um, you got an in with all the Disney execs, right? right? <laughs> like they're yeah, easy customers. <laughs> they, uh, the, you know, the, I started doing. I started teaching, and and I, and I found a real passion for that. And then what started happening was like you know. I started teaching looking at acting? teaching. Uh, no, teaching uh, English actually. It, it, with the idea that I would love to teach drama, I would love to teach right. theater. Um, but in California, uh, you basically have to teach. You have to get an English credential because they don't yet have a drama credential. Um, but I started subbing a lot, and um, and, and I just I, I, it felt like oh yeah, like this is something that I could do. Well, what that did was that allowed me to put focus into that rather than worry about acting because I was saying. Oh, I got to take classes to be a full-time teacher. You know that gives me like a goal with acting. Like you could make a really great movie. I mean, just an, just a jaw-dropping film, and it could nothing could ever happen with it. Mm -hmm. And I needed personally with being married, having a kid on the way, now almost two. I was like, I have got to do something where it looks like progress is being made, because that's just how I'm going to feel comfortable. So, you know, in reality would love to keep acting, would love it, but uh, the reality of the situation is that like, I just have to make money. I, I, yeah. I, I would feel better, and this is where my wife and I differ when we have a lot of arguments and conversations about this, I would much rather work a nine to five as an accountant every day and have a decent, sizable income than because I've had the opportunity to professionally be an actor, I've gotten to feed that um, I'd much rather work the nine to five and feel comfortable financially than go, you know, do that struggle, you know, go up that uphill road again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because you now have a family. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and my wife's whole thing is that she has not had that opportunity that I've had. So for her to just is say, she like, an actress, she's an actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for her, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, you know, why don't we just go get normal jobs? And for her, she she hasn't had the chance to do a lot, and so it's much 
harder for her to say like, oh, I'm going to give this thing up that I've been doing since I was a kid, because, you know, for me, I'm like, well, I, I got to do it a little bit, and I'll just go do something else now. She hasn't got to do that, so like, that's where the, you know, for her, that's that's a tough. That's interesting. Tough road. We recently got new neighbors, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we invite them over for you know happy hour cocktails, you know whatever outside. And, and I was talking to the husband, and um, for, you know from the OC um, came up, and and he kept saying he was a child actor. And when I when I hear the term child actor, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Child actor, right? Yeah, like of course. Children, right? Uh, um, but he was, uh, he was like, I mean, the last thing he did was like 23, 24, 25 on the OC. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're not a child actor, like right, you're right. an actor. You're but an adult actor, he, yeah. he literally did the same thing, like what you're talking about, of like, fuck it, I'm gonna become a cat, you know, yeah. get that nine, five, you know, get that thing, and, yeah. and, um, and you know, and then I don't know. Been married like five or six years or something like that, and he has one kid, another on the way, and um, that's an interesting perspective. That's I like. I actually commend you for that because I I couldn't uh, I couldn't do that. You know, I mean, there's a, there's always the uh, a right now actively job hunting for right. anything that will pay me money or whatever. But like at the end of the day, there is there is only one sure thing that I, I'm going to do for yeah 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 life. and i i like i get it like it, it i i think half of it is like a you know a self-preservation thing of like well if i give it up on my terms then it's not like you know I, it's building a wall you know not letting anybody in sort of thing it makes per it makes sense but yeah. i it may, but you know in conversations with my wife it, it, it when i talk about it it's like it makes it sound like i i don't care about i don't have a passion for acting when in reality the anxiety of of living and, and, and making a living it just for me personally it outweighs it it's not to say that if if you know i got a phone call tomorrow saying hey you know you're gonna you got a, a pile of you still have good. representation i do yeah. yeah i you know and i when i do get an occasional audition I, i'll definitely like I, you go, I go and you do it yeah, yeah the, because yeah. i love doing it and yeah. and like you know like i said like if i if i had the opportunity to be on a six season low pain, medium pain T V show tomorrow, yeah, that's what I would do for a living. Uh no hesitation. I would get you know. But it's just from my experiences, it, that just ain't happening. Mm -hmm. Uh at least for me. So when I said like that I it just from an outsider perspective I just I see the gap closing, would mm -hmm. you kinda agree with that? Of like in terms of like, okay, I'm eighteen years old, nineteen years old I'm gonna do what everybody has told me to do, yep. which is move to LA or New York. Mm -hmm. I pick LA. I want to be an actor, a filmmaker, a writer, whatever. I'm gonna go move to LA. I'm like, like when I came, and I'm not significant. I'm pretty, you know, older than you, and and but but we both have, you know, similar s stories, right? Like, uh, I, I use this example all the time. Brian Johnson, fucking uh, writer director of the last Star Wars oh, yeah. movie and, right. and, yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. else, and he did Looper before that, and Looper got him the whole gig. And have kids, film students, USC kids, look at Ryan Johnson and be like, "See, you just got to make like one or two great movies, and then you get a, a, a you know Star Wars franchise, right. or whatever." And I'm like, "Motherfucker." He slept on couches mm -hmm. and ate shit for ten years oh, sure. before he got to make brick. Right, 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 right. You know, like, like, yeah. like, the the. I mean, even those. There is no such thing as an overnight success. There is no such thing as like making it to your you know statement of like you technically made it. Right. But then, but like, it still required yeah, you yeah. Know, work. To put, sure. you know, to hold up the, yeah. the dam or, or if, whatever. If you planted, you know, some flowers or something, and as soon as they bloom, you just walked away from it. Yeah, like, oh, I got flowers, look at these flowers, yeah. and you never watered them or cared for them, they're going to die. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it requires a lot of work. And if I were 18, um, and I really wanted to do it, I would move out, I would still move out here. A hundred percent, I agree with that. Um, well. I would... Or New York. Or New York. Um... And, and you know, and I and I would do it, especially eighteen. Like that—that's prime. 
you know, because I, I do follow people, I do know people who come out here um, and they, you know, someone told them they look good and they don't have training, you know, and, and a lot of that is like harsh from me because I look at people and I'm like, well, I classically trained, you know, shape. And it's Which like, just is so interesting. When I first found that out about you, you first told me that, I was like, wow, like, no, no offense, but like, I had such a bigger, higher respect of like, because I just knew you from Austin Alley as sure. this, like, right, right, right. you know, funny, like, cowboy guy. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Um, I had good comedic timing. And to know that, like, you're classically trained. Right. There's a difference between, like, um, no offense, Chris Pratt, but, like, a Chris Pratt, you know, who's just, like, just charismatic. Yeah, and of course. And just, Natural. Like, yeah. you know, roll it off. And, like, uh, you know, uh, 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 Ethan Hawke. Yeah. yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Ethan Hawke is a classically mm -hmm. trained, like, very, very, very serious actor, but gets, but is, is put in the same echelon, same mm -hmm. level as, as the Chris Pratt. You know what I mean? Right, like right, right, for sure. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, like, there could not be more different mm -hmm. in terms of their, their very training or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I just, that, yeah. That just goes to the whole thing and, of like what it what it is, right? And, and I get a lot like, and a lot of that is just jealousy for it, if on my part. I, like I see people that come out here, they're models, and then I know I know a model, this girl, who came out here. Um, and she's very pretty, modeled a bit, kind of got a, like an Instagram following, and through that, um, got representation, and through that, got a film that it was wide released, and. Uh, and, and I've seen her, and, and, and it's not because of talent. And I, and I think a lot of that like jealousy comes from like, well, I went four years to, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. who cares? Like, it, do, it clearly doesn't matter as right. much as I thought it that it did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if I could do it over again, I'd move out here when I was 18, do the networking, uh, you know, get the representation, I would be ripped, I would have a strong jaw, <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and yeah, I mean, because it just, it doesn't, it clearly doesn't, if I went to a room, and I've gone into rooms, where someone who's been out here since they were like 14 or 15, who are fine, versus someone who went to, you know, four years and studied their ass off to, you know, to learn Moliere, at the end of the day, it's a sitcom, and it's like, well, this guy has a couple more credits and probably has a little bit bigger of a following. Uh, let's go that route. And that's happened before. But they don't care about it. I mean, I, I don't know how much been a fan or watched but like Seinfeld like mm -hmm. Jerry Seinfeld was not a classically trained actor no. he was surrounded of course by very Absolutely. very you know thespian yeah. you know type I say, actors yeah I say this all the time it's much easier uh, it's much harder to uh, to get a following for a new you know I see it a lot with like Vine not anymore because it's not R.I.P. Vine but like a lot of like Vine stars were getting pilots and and I thought at first I was like that makes me so angry but then I started thinking, for an executive at a network, it's much easier to just get somebody on set to basically feed them line, like do a line reading for them. That's that's very easy. What is hard is finding an audience of three million that one person can tweet out and say, "Hey, I'm going to be on yeah. Fox tonight at eight. Uh, you know, c catch me, catch me there." Well, and to what you said earlier about you know Wednesdays or the the networks or right. producers, no, yeah, it's yeah. like it's like it almost doesn't matter it's like you know they'll mm -hmm. they'll make their yep. they'll check their boxes yep, absolutely. You know, along the way so so it, it also just makes i know that it sounds like angry angry you know this uh, whole everything thing. i do and put out is about angry frustrating <laughs> and i just like i you know and i try to i try to like live in the moment i try to be present for me i just don't see it as something that like i could comfortably you know, like worry where that next paycheck's come. I, I just couldn't. I can't really do that much longer. Yeah. Um, well, and good for you for starting a family because I know several people um, moved to LA, did the grind, mm -hmm. da, -da, -da, da da da, and they put that yeah life mm -hmm. on hold. Yeah, and of they're course. Here 10, 12, 15 years. Right. Then they move back home to Minnesota, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're thirty-five, and mm -hmm. they're not married, and they don't have kids. And yeah. Whatever, and not like that's the end all be all of life, but you know, yeah, kids are sure. cool. Kids are great. Uh, you know, LA is expensive. Yeah, uh, we pay way too much for our rent at our new place. Um, Should move to Topanga. 
Yeah, I might. Um, we might. I, I just, but you know, it, it, that's important to me. It's like having, you know, a, a steady income and, and, and a family and like doing and doing that. Okay, because even if I was on Modern, if even if I booked Modern Family, the very, you know, the pilot for Modern Family or something. Incre buco, buco, Dolores, money, right? But like. You're gone. I mean, you're committed to you know twelve hour days for a long period of time. Now you've got the money to be secure and mm -hmm. have that security and, and, and enjoy it when you're not working on it. But like, it's still it, it's not like working from home where you know someone just you have to still work. You still have to do it. And for me, I just yeah, I just do you keep in touch with uh, anybody from the show? I do talk to Caleb a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Caleb, as I was saying, he's in a new he's embodied. Mm -hmm. Please go check it out. It's very good, um, and he's in a new Hulu show um, that he just that he's filming right now uh, in Georgia. Um, cast out of L.A. but filmed in Georgia. Right. Um, and the other ones not so much. I know Ross is on the Sabrina show on Netflix, yeah. which I really yeah. liked. I I did see. Uh, I liked the first episode. The Jeffrey Dahmer movie. Jeffrey Dahmer movie. Was, I saw he actually he was he pretty he good. Was good. Yeah, he was very good. good. Wasn't that crazy about the whole movie? But I Ross Ross was really good in it. Yeah, yeah. For I someone agree. who I was like, I was like, oh, he's in a boy band, you know, kind of rolled my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, pretty oh, boy. Ross is and a, I was like, nah, he's a good actor. He went, yeah. Rainy um, yeah, played uh, spoiler alert plays my eventual wife on Austin and Alley. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I loved. By the way, I, I oh, it's great series. And like you don't see how, that how they other, ended it. It was no, so perfect. incredible. It was so great. And I'm not just saying that because they brought me back for. 30 seconds of no it games. was like it was like it was like I feel like it was like really for like the fans like mm -hmm. if you watch the show if you appreciated the show right and they're like hey we're signing off right we all you know everybody's grown up yeah show's over right we're gonna give you everything you want you yeah, know packaged together yeah and, and that's what you know knowing what Disney's stuff is of four seasons fifth if you're yeah Wizards of Waverly Place but that's it yeah Knowing that the end game is coming up, you know, allows you to plan for it and work it, and yeah, it was a great ending, great for the fans too, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I talked to Rainy a little bit. You know, she's working on all, some some music and some projects and stuff. And Laura, she does her, she's doing sort of moving in on music career. She just doing put out more a music great stuff. single that was yeah. it was very catchy. Um, you know, I try to. It, it's just that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I wasn't in that four that core group right, where they right. saw each other every day for you know yeah. years. Yeah. Um, and I sort of like I you know like I came in and everyone I, I've never worked on a show with people as nice as that show. I've worked on shows where people I did an episode of How I Met, How I Met Your Mother. Jason Siegel was very nice. He came over, asked me if I had questions, blah blah blah. But I was only there for like two hours. Yeah. You know, I've never met it. They are the four of them are as close as family uh, on Austin and Alley, and it was a great experience. Never had a, a problem with anyone behind the camera. I mean, it was just, it was really good. Great experience. Yeah. And I think that that sort of put me up, up up here. So then when it, there are moments that were down here, I was like, well, how come it's not like that Disney right. show I did? Why, yeah. why is everyone rude? Yeah. You know, that no one was rude on this other thing. So um, it's, yeah, it's perspective and it's figuring everything out. And, yeah. All right. Well, we are beyond time, but I, uh, I like to wrap up every show with a movie recommendation. Okay. Now, I'll give you some time to think. Um, I'd like to... I'll I've go already first. got mine. Okay. Maybe no, you go, go first. So it's well, no, I don't have one yet. I, was, well, because I, I watched I, it last night. Okay, okay, uh, okay. So I, I'd like to try to keep it within the context of kind of, you know, the guest or what we've been talking about. But, like, this the, is one, the one off of the off cuff that I have it has nothing to do with anything we've been talking about in that. The fact that you already have yours, I'll let you go first. Okay. I was hesitant last night. I wasn't hesitant. I was just kind of rolled my eyes at it, thinking about it. Uh, it does have to do with, with what we were talking about a little bit, because we're talking about family-friendly. Mm -hmm. So this is a family-friendly recommendation. Okay. I'm sure a lot Mine of people have seen it. Um, I, I was the most surprised, pleasantly surprised that I've seen a movie in a long time. My wife always falls asleep watching movies at night. She stayed up to finish it. So uh, we watched Paddington 2 last really? night. A hundred percent, probably my favorite movie I've seen all year. Wow. I haven't got to go to the movies a lot, so take that for what it's worth. I think it came out last year, too. It, I don't know when yeah. it came out. 
It was so good. It was so well made. It made me laugh through the entire movie. It was emotional. I cared about everybody in the film. It had an incredible arc. Uh, it, it just a wonderful performance by Hugh Grant. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would watch it again next week. Like, it was so good. That's super interesting. Um, Family friendly, too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, the only movie, again, you know, it, yeah, when you have a kid, mm-hmm. don't get to go to the theaters a lot. Yep. You know, Tuesdays are my favorite day of the week because DOD and new movies come out and right, stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. However, I do have learned to try to escape to. I, I watch movies in the theater by myself. Mm-hmm. Like, Me too. Love it. Um, so not family friendly, but I just this is the most recent movie I've seen in theaters. Uh, Widows. I heard that was really Steve good. Queen. Yeah, it's I love Steve McQueen. Fucking incredible. Yeah. If you liked Heat, if mm-hmm. you like those type, like, yeah, love a good heist. It's so fucking well done. To the point of like, right? It all it obviously builds up to like the big heist. Of course, you know, my. Dude, my chest is pounding. That man can make a movie. Pound. Uh, his it, the way he shoots it. It's mm-hmm. like I'm. I'm only going to show you this. Right. This. But so here's the frame. The majority of his shots. It's like this. Yep. Right. And it's and great. it's just I love it. I love. I'm really the extreme close see it. Ups. I hope I, I get a screener of it because I don't know when I'll get to go to the movie. I first. don't get screeners yet, but yeah. I'm jealous. I'm very. I don't know. I, I I haven't seen a ton of like the Oscar, you know, yeah. movies this year. We got a Twelve Years a Slave screener a couple years ago, so I'm hoping that they. I mean, I mean, it's it's. I think it's better. I mean, yeah, he can And direct. if you saw uh, uh, Shame or yeah, Heart, yeah, yeah, Shame yeah. is incredible. Um, I think the guys just mm-hmm. I, like legit, 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 legit. Uh, you know, and and not to g- get into, but like obviously there's like you know, current state of Hollywood and mm-hmm. where, you know, race and feet women and blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, all that stuff. And, like, I'm all for it and it's all great. And, yes, equality, you know, all that kind of stuff. But he is, so he's a black filmmaker. Mm-hmm. He's British. Right, right. Attacks very American, you know, themes. But, like, this one just, like, it was almost like, it was beautiful because it was, like, it was, like, you could have cast anybody. In his, he just wrote a fucking great story mm-hmm. with great characters. Oh, the black woman happens to be married to a white dude. Right. Who gives a fuck? Right. You know what I mean? And so, like, I, I really like him because he he doesn't he even Twelve Years a Slave. I in my opinion was not was not like racial motivated or anything like that. It was just like it's just a fucking great story about something that actually happened. Right. Right. You know, and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. I will have to check that out. Please check out Paddington 2. And Paddington 2. I'm uh, telling you, I I, t- I was sitting there like you were. Is it on Netflix ago. or anything? Uh, no, I got it on Black Friday. On a whim, I, I took my. We walked over. We lived near like a shopping area, so we walked over on Black Friday evening, and they had a bin of you know cheap DVD Blu-rays and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was like, everybody, it has a. It is one of only four films <laughs> to have a hundred on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm not like a ride or die Rotten Tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah. There are some movies that I've seen and then later looked it up and been like, that got a 36 or whatever it was. Yeah. So, but take that for what it's worth. It's one of only four films. Have you seen Paddington 1? I had not. And I Googled (laughs) around. Were you confused at all? I I was in the same boat. I Googled around um, and said, do I need to see Paddington 1 or Paddington before I see Paddington 2? A lot of the answers were, uh, it it helps a little, but it's not essential. Paddington 2 is standalone. They kind of bring you up to speed within 30 seconds, and then the movie, it's the, the, the CGI of the bear is, I, I never once thought, like, I, I thought for a while, like, oh, like, they got a bear to, like, talk. It never once right. looked, like, grainy or, yeah. uh, incredible. Just a, a sweet comedy, um, and Ben Wishaw plays Paddington, and, and uh, God, I hope they make a Paddington 3. That's Incredible hilarious. script. I'm gonna have to check that. I, out. I was sitting there. I, I, it's not. I, I'm sure it's on VOD. It's not on Netflix though. But yeah, I bought it for six, and I, yeah, you know, I bought that in Blade Runner 2049. Had still hadn't seen it. Bought those two, and um, what we walked out. And I was like, yeah, I guess we should watch it tonight. But as far as I can tell, you do not need to see Paddington One to see to enjoy Paddington. Good. It's like Babe, Babe Pig in the City. Yeah, I don't think you need to see Babe Pig in the no. City to enjoy yeah. Babe Two. Uh. 
Mr. Green. Thank you. John Paul Green. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Of course. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Time really flew. We went over. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's good much. stuff. No, it was, it was really good stuff. Uh, Cut all the padding and stuff at the end. Kind of no, I, I'm going to include everything. I do like zero editing on this stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, if you are listening right now, sure. thank you very much for listening and tuning in. Um, should they check out anything? Like, uh, yeah, you can. I'm on Twitter um, at John Paul Green, J O H N P A U L G R E E N. Uh, I will be in a Nickelodeon show at some point, um, but I'll probably tweet about that. Same on Instagram at John Paul Green. Um, yeah, check cool. me up there. Um, John, thank you very much for coming out on your Sunday afternoon to do this. Uh, pleasure. Um, thank you for the Coke Zero. It well, sponsors the show. Right? It, it, well, yeah, you can have as many as Great. as many. Are, as I will take you up on yeah. that. I'm gonna take a whole case. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, um, go out and and I say this all the time. Go out and make your movie. Go out and do your thing. Go out and. You want to be in something? Go out and make it. You want to absolutely. You know, apparently, I mean, summary of this: you need to move to LA or New York. Yeah, and, and do it if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I couldn't have said it better. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you very much. Thanks. Rhino Rider out. Who? Cool. Awesome, oh, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, sorry that went. Uh, Not.